So we tell the stories and lift each other Give hope to push us further And encourage one another On this episode of Behind the Scenes Beauty, we have a beauty exclusive with the daytime diva herself, Wendy Williams. She's going to talk to us about her upcoming biopic and documentary January 30th on Lifetime, as well as how she feels about dating and what is her beauty must haves. I am here with the queen of media, Miss Wendy Williams. Hello. Hi, Derek. How this are is weird you? talking to you. So we're going to talk about hair. No, we're going to talk about hair. Well, we are going to talk about hair because I remember you being crafty. I remember you being DIY with your wig. So I want to know if you've still been doing that kind of stuff. And we're going to talk about your documentary and your movie. Talk about all of that stuff, if you don't mind. Yeah, the ball's in your court. Go ahead. Okay, so Wendy, I, I feel like you're a hallmark to my success. I don't know if you know this, but my first television experience comes from being on your show. Now, I didn't do your hair, of course, but I would come and help the guests when you would have the fashion show. So my first time seeing my hair work was on your show. So I feel like you're a benchmark to success for me. So thank you for doing the show. Wow, thank you. You know what? I love hearing stories like that. Thank yeah, you. it was, and, and I would come periodically and I would come and I would do the show. Every time you would do this, I miss the Wendy fan. What happened to the Wendy fan? No, the diva fan is still yeah. here. Yeah, okay, okay. It, it's still here. Do you ever bring it out for fashion shows? Uh, we do from time to time. You know, it, it, it is uh, very heavy. <laughs> right. It's not good, and it's very noisy. And but we do have the diva fan. You know, there are things that we've tweaked. We've been on TV now for 12 years, and um, a lot of things are still the same. But a lot of things are a little different, including me. Yes, you. But you have grown, and I'm so proud of you. I first want to give you my condolences as someone that has lost their mother. I know that's a it's a trying time for you, but I appreciate you. You seem to be doing very well and very strong. And so, yeah. I want you to know my prayers are with you. Thank you. And yeah, so how has it been doing the show COVID style? I've gotten used to it. I kind of like it. You know, really? there is nothing like an audience full of people, the roar of the crowd, like the old days. But we need to get these vaccines straight. And even after the vaccines are straight, everybody is not going to get vaccinated. So I would still want to have people wear masks here. And I would still want, you know, six feet of separation or maybe even eight. And right. I would still want there to be plenty of hand sanitizer everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, not just for me and for the, the crew and the staff, but for our co-host who would be allowed to come in. Uh, that, that, I don't think it'll ever go back to what it was, not for something like a talk show where everything is so close. You know, it looks large on TV, but, and you work in a larger studio there at The View than we have, mm -hmm. uh, but our studio is a, is a little jewel box and we make it work. Yeah, well yours is still a nice size. Ours is slightly larger, but yeah. I, I, I miss having a studio audience, I do, it was fun. Um, and I, I, going to your studio audience is definitely a party, always. I feel like you, you have to, drink a Red Bull before coming because <laughs> Marco is going to have that joint popping the whole time. Lots of coffee. I love the music. You know, we got DJ Sus one. Uh, we got Marco G. Um, I definitely enjoy the music that we play and I love everything from, you know, the Taylor Danes to the Biggie Smalls and everything in between. Coming from radio, though, I am very used to creating um, imaginations of the people who were, were listening at that time and now watching TV. My radio experience has been able to help me during this um, corona situation. And uh, meaning it's nothing for me to just look at a camera and imagine that millions of people are watching. You are the only, you are one of the few hosts that I know could carry a whole show with not one guest. Just you talking to the audience 
you're personally entertaining personally yourself. But I don't know what it is about you. Just sitting there and just hearing you have thoughts and speaking them out loud is so amazing to me. And we used to say that even before Corona, though, like you are that person that can just sit there and carry a whole show and not have not one guest ever. Well, you know, you'll see it play out in the documentary. Um, you know, when our show first got started, I was an unknown black girl in New York. And those three things are not very appealing when an A, B, or even C list actress or musician wants to promote their product. You know, first of all, New York. People are intimidated by New York, even, even if they are Hollywood and LA and that, that whole bit. You know there's nothing like New York. We no. are a whole different animal. They come here, they get frightened, so they go to what they know. They go to you know, the Good Morning Americas, with all due respect, they go to The View. Right. Uh, they go to um, Kelly and whoever her host is at the time. Now it's Ryan Seacrest. And then they go home. They feel as though they've done their job, they promoted their product, and then they move on. The publicists weren't even looking at me. I was this loudmouth Black girl who talked about the celebrities, not with celebrities. And so in order for our show to stay on TV, we had to make a choice. And my choice was, let's make hot topics longer. Let's really listen to the people who watch our show. What did they like? A lot. They really loved, they loved hot topics. So now yeah. hot topics, which used to only be eight minutes, and you'll see Sierra and how the Lifetime movie that she stars as Wendy in, how it plays out, Hot Topics is now 22, 25 minutes before right. the first commercial break. Ask Wendy has become downright filthy, which I love. <laughs> you know, the questions that people ask me are the proof that we are now a household show. People drink their coffee, they admit to having affairs. And in my mind, I'm saying, do you realize that you're on TV? <laughs> right, right, right. Not this. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Okay, so what I do want to ask you too is where do you get the courage like to ask some of the stuff you do? I've always been amazed like you have no filter. Where does that come from? Um, I was born that way. TMTLTF too much, too fast, too loud. That's what my parents would tell me before going, you know, out to places. Wendy, don't talk so much, don't talk so fast, and don't talk so loud. Mm -hmm. And those very things I would roll my eyes at and I'd say, one day I'm gonna make this work for me. You know, at least I'm consistent in my rudeness. Is that rude? I don't know. Um, but I, I enjoy telling stories and I enjoy authentically doing the show. I even down to watching my own staffers who are here every day and you work at a talk show and, 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 and you've worked in this business long enough. And I know that, you know, other people who might not be happy behind the scenes of the show you know, people who work there, whether it's a secretary or an elevator operator or a boss. Mm -hmm. But here at Wendy, one of my great joys is to see my very own coworkers laugh at me, laughing at me or right. something or be stunned. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you have the documentary coming out. You have the biopic coming out. Yeah. What in the world possessed you to put your life out on display like that? I wanted to do it before somebody else tried to do it. See, because th there became more to the story. I thought when I put my uh, my bestseller on, uh, out, which came out in about 2001 or two or something like that, it was a New York Times bestseller. And and Kevin uh, uh, added to it by talking about he cheated on me, but he made it sound like it was only one time when I knew it was more. But anyway, anywho, um, uh, you know, he cheated on me, he regretted it. And now it's just, you know, the three of us and we are happy, me, him and our son. Um, what made me put this out now is that um, the pieces of my life were getting bigger. 
in a in a happily tragic way. Every year I've been on TV, this show has gotten bigger and better. And more was expected of me. More was expected of everyone around us. We can no longer just have three cameras. Now we need four and then we need six cameras and we can no longer have a stand next to me, you know, with a big screen TV. We need a media wall and we can no longer have the media wall with the lines in it where you just put it together like a puzzle. We need a full media wall the way everybody else has. And we got to spend that million dollars to get that. And we no longer uh, need just clothes from, you know, you know, a, a cheap and cheerful dress. Right. We now need uh, stuff straight off the runway because uh, Willie is now putting me in sample size and I am now, I'm clearly not a sample size girl, but, but those big designers yeah. are now sending $2,000 and $3,000 pieces. And they're sending, you know, the YSL roller skates. You know that they YSL, not 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 uh, the same. <laughs> you know, and they 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 sent those only to certain people. And and I happen to have a pair. I have lymphedema now. I will never wear them. I wore them once for a photo shoot, and now they hang as artwork in my apartment. Gotcha. Okay. So this might be a personal question, but I do want to ask this. When I look at you and when the viewers look at you, you are the brand, Wendy Williams. You come off very powerful, very strong, very take no mess. Yeah. So as a viewer, because at The View, we're watching you as we get, when we're in hair and makeup, we like, what's going on? Let's turn to Wendy, see what she over there talking about. So yeah. we're talking and we're thinking to ourselves, she's so strong. She's so powerful. And I saw where you did an interview with Billy Bush where you said that you knew that you and Kevin wouldn't be forever. Um, Knowing that, why entangle him so much in your life? Like, why even give him that access? Because I feel like being so strong and you didn't need him. So what what made you give him that access to your life, to be your manager, to to be a part of the show? I fell in love. I'm just a girl. You know, Mm -hmm. Derek, at the end of the day, and I am my own brand and I'm really strong. I'm stronger than most of the women that I know and stronger than most of the men that I know um, and very resilient. But I fell in love with him. And when I met Kevin, Kevin was on the block. Mm -hmm. Kevin is not a high school graduate. Kevin was a block dude, dude from Brownsville, Brooklyn. And you know what I mean when I say on the block. <laughs> right. Um, and and he'd never had um, a job with a pension plan. And he had never had a job where he can walk into the bank and, you know, have not just, you know, a check cashing place to cash a check for something or, or only cash because he's working the block, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I, and I fell in love with him. And when I got this talk show, it seemed only natural that he would be my executive producer along with me. Now, uh, my position was more powerful than his, you know, because I was the host and a more powerful say in being executive producer, because no matter what he would say to me about how he wanted things to go, when those double doors open, I knew it was just me. And during commercial, he'd come out and sometimes he would, he would talk to me to tears and my staff would see it, but it's okay. I just busted off a story I wanted to bust off and I'll deal with him later. Right. And I would dab my tears. My makeup artist, Morel, would come out and re-glue an eyelash. The camera people, the men and the women, would, um, instead of doing the original camera shot coming in on me talking, they would have the that camera shot from the commercial go on the audience. And then I would go into the control room once the show was totally over. And when I thought Kevin was safely in his office with his friends talking block nonsense, cause you know, instead of going to the hood, now he was inviting the hood into here. So he was his hair cut or, or buying, you know, new Gucci outfits or, you know, the jeweler was up there, he's buying, you know, diamonds and stuff like that, ordering cars and, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm downstairs telling the, con- the, the control room, listen, I appreciate that shot that I saw, you know, where, you know, Kevin, we came back and I know you all saw me crying. I know it's awkward here right now. One day, if you guys just stick with me, I'll explain it to you. And this was, 12 years ago, 12 years ago, this has been going on 
I've been on TV for 12 years. This has been going on for 12 years where these same people have, I talk to them privately and then quickly skedaddle before Kevin comes. The times that he catches me talking to these people, he'd be like, what you doing, talk, what you talking to them about? You right. don't need to be talking to them. I talk to them, what's this about? Kevin, it's the camera shot coming back from commercial. You know, I wanted it to be coming back on me, not coming back on the crowd. You know, they thought because they saw you come out and make me cry and loosen up my eyelash. See, I talked to him like that in front of them right. that, that I could not handle, you know, the shot coming back on me. And then he'd be like, no, you have every shot on Wendy. This is the Wendy Williams show. You have right. every shot come back on Wendy. I said, yeah, but you know what? It'd be a lot easier for them to know that if you don't come out and voice your opinion of the show during the show. Gotcha. So- in your office. Okay. You what? I'll see you home for dinner. What you making? I don't know, what do you want? Pick up some of that fish that I like. Okay. That's so that's so wild to me because like I said, to, to see you to be so hard and so soft, to see you go through the interviews that you've been through, to see you push through this industry where black women, and I say this to every black woman that I come in contact with, I respect you so much because they are always fighting against you. They're never in your favor. And whenever you guys shine like you do, my hat's off to you. I say that to Sonny. I say that to Whoopi. Working closely with them, I have seen how people will try to disrespect them at times. And so mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that when I see you guys really rise to the occasion and still be that girl, I'm always appreciative and I always just want to tip my hat to you. You know, I often wonder about the lighting at The View. You have beautiful lighting, but the complexions, you know, you have from Whoopi to Sunny, and then when Sarah comes and Joy is there, lighting uh, a black woman, and I learned this from my own lighting lady who's been with me since day one of the six week sneak peek. She happens to be white, she's very respected, and she runs the lighting department. She, all guys are in the lighting department. Mm -hmm. and, and she no longer climbs the ladder like she used to 12 years ago, but right. she one knows how to get on that megaphone and make sure that I live properly. Cause you know, they were lighting me too light. In the, they, yeah. you know, they were lighting me like a, like a white woman. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with her one day and um, it happened to be one of those days where Kevin came down to the floor. What you still doing here? The show's been over for, you were supposed to be home two hours ago. I was talking to Marilyn about lighting and the guys are up there and they're doing their thing. I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get the positions so that, you know, when I'm doing hot topics, you know, I'm, I'm not totally blown out. And so that she's not, you know, with every year I get older, I don't want all the shadow under my chin or my hair is blonde. It's not ash blonde. It's, it's, you know. Got some warm tones too. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't have black circles under my eyes. And so I want to be sure that she's lighting that properly. And um, and I want to be sure that Morel works with her with the lighting as the makeup artist, you know that 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 um hair and makeup and lighting all go together they do kevin never took the time to get to know that kind of stuff so i would have to quickly do that stuff behind his back gotcha. now um i feel very very free because most of the people who are here at wendy um have either been here since day one or love it here like ben who's producing your show now <laughs> It's here yeah. by the moonlights by night. And I love when my people do that. My manager is no longer my husband. He's a man by the name of Bernie Young. Bernie is love, love Bernie. Bernie. right there on my couch in the corner and would be quick to get up and say, okay, Wendy, this interview was too long, time to go home. But he doesn't, his delivery is civilized. Right. You know, Kevin is smart, but Kevin's delivery was trash. Uh, was his business delivery was trash. Yeah. And you know what? Baby or no baby, mistress or no mistress, I outgrew Kevin. You did. I, 
I outgrew him. I outgrew him personally and I outgrew him professionally. The baby and the multiple women that he cheated with just made it even easier. Okay, so when you, after you did the movie, after you, well, first of all, let me say this since you brought up the Glam Squad. You have been looking amazing this season. Jasmine mm-hmm. has been doing an amazing job on your hair. Morel always makes your skin flawless and Willie always has put you in some beautiful clothing. So I just want to say kudos to them. You know, Glam has to recognize Glam. I do want to ask you this question and I have one more question after this, but I want to ask you, um, after doing the movie, after doing the biopic, when you go home and it's just Wendy, what did you learn about yourself? What settled in your spirit and said, wow, I didn't know this about myself? I didn't know that my life would be as big and grand as it is. You know, I had a nice life growing up. I I never wanted for anything, even as a child. My parents, I grew up during Reaganomics where, you know, um, um, you know, I felt like we, uh, like I grew up with a housekeeper, mm-hmm. not full time and live in like my peers, but I grew up with, with a housekeeper. I grew up with fine education and all the best clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but when I, my life now, I never knew that I could do this on my own. I am paying alimony. I am paying lawyers on retainer, depending on what I need the lawyers for, but they're on retainer. I go to concierge doctors, which are different than just going to a doctor. These are the doctors who are available to you 24 hours a day and they get into you when they do stuff to you that you wouldn't even think to do to yourself to be sure that you're good. And a lot of them do not take insurance. Mm -hmm. I have that luxury and 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 I can't believe I'm mature enough. If I have a thousand dollars, I'd rather go get a good checkup than buy a handbag. I've got, I've got more handbags and all that stuff. I mean, those are tools of the trade. I've got more of that stuff than I know what to do with, except for love it, you know, and and take care of myself. Look at my slippers. (laughs) Now, let me tell you something. Because I have lymphedema, um, Mm. these are made by Dapper Dan's nephew. Um, Because I have lymphedema, my shoes have to be, that's why I wear sneakers all the time. Um, I already have a size 11 woman's foot, but lymphedema, you have to look that up yourself. It's, It's caused by interruption of the lymph node system. But I've got these in various colors, and this is how I walk around my house. They look so comfortable and warm. And you know what? And they're luxurious. And I don't wear robes. I wear peignoirs. Oh, so do you know I wear your robe? I have, it was so funny. Morel called me earlier today. I had the Wendy robe on. Whenever you come to your show, those robes are amazing. Oh, they are. So they lovely. are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, every time, I still wear I don't wear those in my house. My house is not an homage to me. It's an homage to the good life. And because our house in Livingston, New Jersey, I decorated everything, you know, uh, the best that I could possibly afford while still being able to save money for me and my son and look out for my parents, even though they never asked me for anything and also be prepared to pay for alimony, which I pay alimony, you know, this me too movement. If girls want to be equal, it's got to be all across the board girls. You know, if you make, I don't recommend that you work with your husband because I made him my manager. And then when I decided to divorce him, he had to be fired. Yeah. In other words, I made him divorced and unemployed all in one day. <laughs> and that cute little scene on the internet where, where the car is being, the Ferrari. Right. Is that was real. Oh, that was me too. <laughs> you were shutting it down, huh? You yeah. know, that's one thing Whoopi said. Whoopi was like, you know, I have been married a couple of times, but the one thing I never did was put the man in part of my businesses because it it costs you, you know? You know what? Um, it was a hard lesson to learn, but um, I, I have no regrets. I will never love like that again. And I have 
the stories to tell to these young girls. Like I look say that though. Why do you say I will never love like that again? In what aspect do you mean by that? Well, I would never live with anybody again. No, it, like you're not moving into my beautiful apartment. There's no room for you. Gotcha. And and I'm not moving into your beautiful apartment, big mansion, your yacht, whatever. Um, there will be a prenum. Whether you have more money than me or not, what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't want to be a stepmother. I don't want to be responsible for bringing your kids on vacation with us. Oh, so you my, keep talking today. You really ain't gonna look like that. My, my son is grown. You right. know, I'll introduce you to him, but you will not walk around my house in your boxing drawers comfortable like that. Right. I don't care if we've been together for 10 years. There's just certain things that my son doesn't need, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 I don't want to come to your house and and have to deal with hearing fights with you and your wife. That's why we can't live together. Gotcha. You know, it just makes it easier that way. But I do love love and I can't wait to have a boyfriend. And I can't wait to have many boyfriends to uh, to whittle it down to just one. And I would love to get married again. Okay. Well, if you don't want to live with anyone, what does being married again look like though? It looks like somebody who can um, act act in my steed if I get clunked in the head, which hospital that that person knows I want to go to because there's a hospital and there then there's hospitals. Right, I, right, right. I, I, you're, you're not going to leave me out here, you know, in the hallway waiting for a room. I need somebody to act in my steed. And right now that person is Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> come through Bernie. Bernie. And, and Bernie is come through Bernie, but in, in real life, that person is supposed to be your spouse. Right. And until the laws change where, you know, live-in lovers can have that, then, um, you know, a spouse is somebody in your will. A lover is not in, you're not in my will. Right. And I'm not asking to be in your will. Okay, okay. It's just, it's just different. And I'm online right now, I'm on one site. Oh, really? As Wendy Hunter, but you know my name is Williams, and and you know more about me than I know about you. Um, come one, come all to my Halloween ball. Who wants to date? Wow, like that doesn't scare you, like no. I, you know, I'm no dumbbell. Uh, you know, everybody could be lying. You know, I could be the only one not lying because I'm not lying. Right. And, um, you know, but I have a whole security force here at the show yes, that the sure. show lets me use outside of the show. I also have um, a really good uh, PI situation. I've got a really good assistant, my chief of staff. That's what she calls herself. Chief is like a cop herself. Bernie was a detective for NYPD and has never lost his copley ways. And I certainly have two cats who think that they're pit bulls. So you got you you you're taken care of. Ain't nobody getting over on Wendy Williams. You know what? Uh, um, anything is possible, but um, shame on me because it's happened once. Won't happen again. Ever. Ever. That's for sure. Who, who is he? How tall will he be? What color will he be? <sighs> who knows? But the the options are endless. I'm sure. I'm okay. open to love. We are behind the scenes beauty. We do talk about beauty. I love to talk about other things, but we do talk about beauty. And I want to know what's your, since you're at home, what's your luxuriating thing that you do? What is it that Wendy does when she's trying to make herself feel pampered and all of that good stuff? Well, I feel I like love, I love moisturizer. I can tell you what I have in my beauty bag. This is the okay. one, that, you know. A girl has got to have bags inside of bags. It makes it easier for the busy woman to change bags every day. You know, you've got to have bags inside of bags. I always have water. I always have um, hand moisturizer. This happens to be Lemire, but the drugstore brand will do. However, you know, I am Wendy. You, yes, you are. You always have tooth pickers. The older you get, the more it can't be straight, okay? 
This <laughs> get all behind these fifty six year old teeth. They look amazing though. And I they're know. all and they're all mine. Really, the best, the best investment I made. I got all my fillings years ago changed from silver to white. Porcelain, yeah. And at that time, I had no idea I was going to be on TV. You always have extra face masks, black, more fashionable. You always have a fragrance. This happens to be, oh, Joe Malone. Oh, okay. Um, I love a C6. Okay. Uh, drugstore. Voluminous. Come on, L'Oreal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I really do enjoy this. Ooh, the top is, but you know what I do with this? A little something like this every once in a while. Because, you know, when you have on the masks and this, this I treasure because this is before everybody started. These are real Swarovski crystals. And this is a Catherine Bauman. And I ordered this while I was on bed rest 20 years ago uh, waiting for Kevin. And it costs a couple thousand bucks. And, but not one crystal is missing. And oh. it's still work. And now, a girl down the street can make this and it, it would cost $25. But this is, and it, it says Judith Lieber on the back. This is from nesting. And I drop it in my bag and not one crystal at the bottom. So that's what I carry. Um, I also enjoy eating well, which is part of skin. Uh -huh. um, I have discovered the jalapeno pepper jelly. I enjoy this and peanut butter. Um, what do you put that on? Well, I, I eat it with a spoon because I live by myself and I can do that. Gotcha. Because I can do that. And so I never close my mouth. No, no crackers or anything, just out of the spoon, you just put them together? No, because the crackers add to the calories. Oh, gotcha. I'm a calorie counter and I always drink a lot of water. I drink Listen, a lot of water. I drink water. And it's very important to uh, number two at least two times a day. Do you do lemon water in the morning so that it helps that process along? No. You just have, you just have a good system that just does it on its own. <laughs> yeah. She's very reliable down there. Listen, Wendy, I feel like we got very close in this interview. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so do you do, do you still DIY your, uh, like, because I know you have show wigs and then you have wigs at home that you, work with. Do you my still are you still doing that? Um I don't do my street wigs anymore uh in terms of you know what? Yes I do. I there is a place that I do enjoy going and spending my own money and not having you know the the budget from here at the show go. And I'll pick up a wig and I'll put a few tracks in it and I and I have I have a sewing kit. <laughs> Uh, um, that a big spool of weave thread and the Kirby needles and things like that. And I do a pretty good job. I also know how to dye my own roots uh -huh. and, and, and I know how to make my highlights. I don't clip in highlights. I like to make the highlights. Yeah. But now do I do that a lot? Not so much. Now I find that Bernie's got me so busy with other projects that, um, and and then the cats, you know, they they're just a mess. They're hopping on, hopping off. I, you know, what I like to do? I like to lay around and think I look gorgeous, and and, and eat and watch TV and talk on the telephone, I and understand. I do a little reading. But it's nice to have the skill. Like if by chance Morel did not show up one day, I know that our second. You know, our, our guest makeup artist could do my makeup. Mm -hmm. And if he or she did not know what to do, I know how to glue on a strip of lashes. I know how to do makeup in a pinch. Morel, pick a finger. <laughs> I, also know, is not buying it. I also know, and Jasmine knows <laughs> that it, in a pinch, I do know how to do my own wigs. You know, take one of hers. Follow the twirl, and and Willie knows that in a pinch I can grip anything that he gets for me and put it on and make it work. And this is what I do for Willie that I don't do for the others. Willie needs the neck down to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So when he picks up a size four today, that same size four better be fitting in April because he's paid a fortune for it, or it was given to him given to him for free 
and I must wear it. Right. So for Willie, I don't eat the crackers with the jelly. <laughs> all, all for Willie. For Willie, I will have an air sandwich and a bottle of water. <laughs> Come on, air sandwich. <laughs> Mouth is just bordering, just thinking about it. You're delicious. <laughs> you know, my favorite uh, day is when you came into the show late and you just had, you had your purse and you just walked across. That was my favorite. I just love the realness that you bring and just just being you. You I, you represent the everyday person just, just being themselves. And, and I people don't understand how really, really, really real that day was. And you know what? And Kevin was like, you don't need hair. You don't need makeup. You don't need to be briefed on those hot topics. F them people, go in there and do it. And you know what? See, when you watch the movie, you'll see he really was my biggest evil cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And and so we were going through the Lincoln Tunnel and, and he's blowing the horn and cursing people out and we're driving because we wouldn't always take a car service because he liked to drive the cars that we paid so much for with my money, but I wanted a car, <laughs> you know. Right. But, you know, I would use the car service home, but going in, we'd be the ones in the fancy cars whipping it and with the loud music that we mm. both loved. And when we pulled up, um, I had not been briefed on the hot topics. You know, he, he, Kevin said, you know, let them just throw the stories, you know, just throw some mess in the prompter. And I'm not, I'm prompter assisted. I'm not prompter eyes. Dependent, you're not and, prompter dependent, yeah. Right, and, and he said, and you look beautiful. You look better with no makeup than with makeup. People say that to me all the time, by the way. I know you're not going to believe it, but I really do have a really, really beautiful. Um, Come on. I really do have a very. You have great skin. You are I, giving it to us. <laughs> I really do have, um, you know, I'm, I'm very confident right. in who I am. Right. I don't have black circles under my eyes. I don't have. Um, Morella's having a fit, but look, I'll, I'll do one thing. <laughs> Morella's like, oh, my word is gone. Oh, hey. Look, <laughs> look, you know, because Bernie's going to say, look, I get a little red because you know. Your light skin. Okay. Right. But look, yeah, you're, rubbing, you're rubbing your skin, so of course. But look, look, but you can see, you look. It's that's not too much difference, right? It's on our nose. And you have great cheekbones, too. Well, I get a little assistance. Oh, I never knew that, dude. It looks great. Oh, you got to do it from the back and okay. then they the front and then she molds. But I do come from a cheekbone family. <laughs> and as we get older, all of our faces fall. And if you have an extra dollar, don't buy a new handbag. Buy I a new cheekbone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. I love you so much. Oh my God, thank you so much, Wendy, for doing this. I appreciate you so much. Do you really? I do. I mean, you did not have to do this at all. I'm just, I'm the little show that could. And, and for you to take your time and come to to my uh, show is 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 more than I could ever imagine. Thank you, Morel and Bernie, for helping to assist. And, you know, Ben, Jasmine, and Willie, everybody. I just want to thank everybody. Oh, whoops. Look at you. Uh-oh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. It's okay. What made, you, what, it's made okay. You, what made you stop pulling the notes from your wigs? <clears throat> because the wigs were just, I mean, that was an old thing. Wigs, boobs. I could still do it. I've done it before, you know, every once in a while. But, you know, um, I nothing did other than that. When you get somebody who makes you wigs, like this is a lace front wig, but I don't do the glue and all that. You know, mm -hmm. Jasmine is brilliant. But if I pull the note from my wig, then you would see where the wig is. And by the way, you see that I actually do have hair right. with sideburn, sideburns and the whole bit. Come but I, I don't I don't need to do that anymore. You know, I pull the I pull the notes from my mind, from my memory. Look, but This is it. That is it. Hi, boys. Yes. I'm yeah. not mad at it. You look great. Thank you. Yes.
Okay. Uh, uh, should we expect any more comedy? Are you still working on your comedy? Are you still going in that lane? Excuse me. My comedy is every day at 10 a.m. And in with, in with um, the movie, you will find perhaps that you'll need a box of tissues. You, you'll cry. There are probably some things that you might identify with in your own personal life that you had no idea that I was going through, or maybe things that you never want to go through. So I went through it for you. So you'll never have to go through that. No. Um, but there, there's a little comedy in tragedy and there's a little of everything, I think for everyone, this movie and the documentary, it's not just for women and it's not just for men, it's for everybody, um, but not the children, you know. Right, right, um, right. But they're, they're sex. You see booty. <laughs> I'm there, there, there's sex and yes, there's drugs. I've had, you know, my row with that. Uh, there's loud talking, there's very good music. Actually, you'll enjoy uh, the music, You'll actually know the words to a lot of it. There's fighting. Quick question. How involved were you? Like, to, to what extent were, did you? I executive oh, produced it. Derek, I've got to go. Okay. Bye. Okay. So I guess that's the end of our interview. Thank you, though, Wendy. And thank you, Morel Hollis, for making this happen, along with Bernie. You guys, on January 30th, make sure you check your local listings for Wendy Williams, the movie, and the documentary. And once again, this has been an amazing episode of Behind the Scenes Beauty. Behind the Scenes Beauty.